The path China is following, led by the CPC, is an uncharted course, requiring us to be trailblazers. Therefore, mistakes and setbacks are basically unavoidable in this process. How has China's ruling party, the Communist Party of China, the CPC, kept up with the times? How has the CPC adapted to changing conditions and led China to its historic development and modernization? What can be learned from the CPC's history, its triumphs and tragedies? Why was the Chinese Communist Party successful and the Soviet Communist Party was not? Why must the party be rejuvenated? What is intra-party democracy? How to enhance transparency? How to establish credible checks and balances in a system with a single leading party? What challenges does the party face amidst increasing domestic complexity and international volatility? What does the party consider its greatest dangers or tests? And what are the party's enduring ideals? What are its visions? These questions and more are addressed in the party's new book series titled Understanding the CPC, published by the CPC about the CPC. The CPC's development and challenges take us closer to China. In the 1800s, especially during the Opium Wars, Western nations used gunboat diplomacy to open China through its military force. China became subject to unequal treaties, whereby Western nations imposed concessions on China, reducing China's sovereignty over its own country. From the 1860s onward, China began to reform in order to meet the military and political challenge of the West. Chinese pioneers searched for ways to adapt Western learning and technology while preserving Chinese learning and values. One of these pioneers was Sun Yat-sen. Professor Xie Chun Tao is the director of the Party History Teaching and Research Department at the Central Party School. He's also a recipient of the National High Level Personnel of Special Support Program on Philosophy and Social Science. 中华民国是跟着西方的政治制度学的 while China surged among different ideologies, in 1917, the October Revolution brought Marxism and Socialism to Russia. Marxism and Socialism soon spread to China. Some Chinese intellectuals believe that Marxism could guide the revolution to victory. In 1919, the May 4th movement against imperialism and feudalism broke out in China. It awakened the Chinese people in an unprecedented way. After the movement, the Chinese working class, as an independent political force, entered the historical arena. Between July 23rd and 31st, 1921, the first National Congress of the Communist Party of China, the CPC, was held in Shanghai, marking the founding of the CPC. The party itself has gone through its own transformations and troubles uh, during this uh, entire period uh, since its founding in uh, 1921. So discuss with me the uh, experiences the party from an internal basis had during this uh, uh, period of time that uh, is uh, getting close to 100 years. What, what has been the structure and the trauma and the reorganizations and transformation of the party itself? Zhuo Guan Dang, Zhuo Ai Yi Nian Cheng Li De Shi Hou, 
，它是一个小组，人非常的少。在这个组织过程中间，他就会发现，来自莫斯科的命令不很准确。Wang Xiangsui is the director of the Strategic Studies Center at Beihang University. He's an expert on China's strategic challenges and security issues. He's the author of the book "Exploring the Miracle" in the Understanding the CPC book series. Then, 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 包括是在外国留学的一些共产党的高级领导人不太认同的，但是在这个几十年过程中间，慢慢就认同了，发现还是山沟里的马克思主义更灵。就中国，呃，又作为一个非常长期的有这个古文明的这么一个国家，共产党作为政治精英，他们会对于传统的一些政治文化有汲取，这就是。为人民以民为本的这种基本思想，去找出中国自己规律的一些做法。Support from the people enabled China to achieve victory over Japan in 1945, and the CPC to achieve victory over the Guomintang in 1949. After the founding of the People's Republic of China, the CPC's leadership was put to test. From the beginning of the People's Republic, 1949-1950, to the beginning of Reform, 1978, approximately, China went through some uh, vast uh, perturbations uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, political um, uh, mass movements and some very troubled times. What was the economic thinking in terms of the economy, how China relied on the the, the model of the Soviet Union for its, uh, its thinking about uh, um, Marxism, Leninism in, the ter in, in economic terms. That三十年呢,应该说是作为党来讲,原来是从做武装斗争,就是领导军队发战争的这种方式,转到做经济建设。在初期的,前面大概初期的十年左右,是从苏联学习了很多的计划经济的做法。但是在这个过程中间呢，他们也发现苏联的有些做法并不见得适应中国的经济的呃发展的现实，就在不断的摸索。比如说工业化应该怎么搞，农村集体化应该怎么搞，包括城市建设怎么搞，共产党的基本上是没有数的。而那个时候的国际环境呢，是全体对于中国进行了封锁。前面的十年左右，跟苏联就是京沪会组织还是有联系。到后来，中苏开始这个辩论之后，他已经也没有这种经济援助，就完全靠中国自己。在那种情况下，中国和中国共产党面临的环境是非常困难的，所以只能够找到一条合适的道路。在这个找的路的过程中间，经历了非常多的挫折。It was through hardship that the CPC learned to seek truth from facts. 在中国共产党领导中国走的这一条道路呢，是前人没有走过的道路。Gao Yongzhong is vice minister of the Party History Research Office of the CPC Central Committee. His expertise covers intra-party democracy, grassroots party organizations, and other party-building issues. 哎，这路地上本来没有路，要自己拿脚去踩，所以这个过程中间的这个失误。这个曲折应该从理论上讲是不可避免的。我个人觉得，这个五十年代后期的反右扩大化，还有大跃进，都是这个反映了当时的这个领导层的一种急于求成的这样一种思想，就是想感英超美，这个想把中国的事情办得更好更快一点。结果呢，脱离了实际。脱了实际，来了个大跃进，包括那时候亩产万斤粮，这个都是不可能的。但是我们党呢，呃，有有能力自己纠正自己的错误。你比如说这个大跃进、人民公社，这后来都到六十年代，这些呢都做了一定的修正，回归到了正确路线。呃，错误和挫折教训了我们，保证我们以后就路又走得更顺一点，呃，方向更明确一点。改革开放以后呢，我们这个
After the reform and opening up, we drew up the party's basic line, which Deng Xiaoping said we would commit to for a hundred years. Unless there were major war and turmoil, we would focus on economic development. You cannot understand China without understanding the party, China's ruling party, the Communist Party of China, the CPC. We explore the inner workings of the party with its leading thinkers and organization officials. What are the party's beliefs, practices, structure, governance, development, and challenges? What's behind the intense anti-corruption campaign? What are the deep implications? Where is the party going? What are its future prospects? Explore the inner workings of the party with its leading thinkers and officials. You are watching Closer to China with me, Robert Lawrence Kuhn. In 1976, the end of the Cultural Revolution ushered in a new development stage for China. In December 1978, the third plenary session of the 11th Central Committee of the Communist Party of China was held in Beijing. The conference marked the beginning of China's era of reform and opening up. When reform started and Deng Xiaoping made his uh, very courageous uh, transformation of, uh, of uh, China's economy, it meant that what was previous was, was not working, was wrong. So what was the data at the time? What were the specifics at the time where China's leadership, the CPC, could look at what had happened during those 20, uh, uh, 9, 20, almost 30 years, and, and could say that when we utilized the Soviet model or whatever, we, the planned economy, it was wrong. What, what, what was the evidence at the time that made them make the big step of reform? Ying 但是由于在文化大革命之后，很多的这种经济的这种发展水平还是很低的，那他就认识到，既然外部又允许开放了，而内部发展的又不足，那么我们能不能够通过改变我们原来的计划经济的体制，跟世界的这种总体的全球化进
，人们就去抢购东西，这就导致了一个社会性的问题。后来共产党也就总结这方面的经验，就发现，在牵扯到很多老百姓日常生活的时候的这些改革措施，一定要慢，一定要让大家明白，一定要把路线图画得很清楚。对于可能的危险，我们要进行控制，不能够。这种闯关的方式。改革开放以后呢，我们这个最重要的就是制定了党的基本路线。呃，党的基本路线呢，就是邓小平说了一百年不动摇，除非发生了大的战争和这个动大，那么一都还要一一心一意搞经济建设，这么这个搞改改革开放。我们有一个四项基本原则，主要是共产党的领导，这个改革开放、经济建设为中心这些东西。这个这三十年多年来呢，中间也有过一些呃这个探索中的挫折和失误，但总的来说呢，还是比较顺利的。这个我们在经济政策上面有一个重大的理论突破和实践突破，就是建立了呃社会主义市场经济。呃，这个小平同志讲过，是这个资本主义也有计划，社会主义也有市场。市场经济不是资本主义的专利，所以我们在思想解放的过程中间呢，呃，成功的实现了在中国实现建立了市场经济的体制，也收获了很大的这这个经济成就，这是值得说一个。同时呢，我们这还要呃，过去叫呃两手抓，两手都要硬，就是还不放不不放弃精神文明建设，就是这个思想意识形态方面的这样的。一些领域呢，我们还是这个对党员和人民进行教育，那么要这个抵制和消除市场经济一切向前看这样的一些呃负面影响。我理解这种先进性最重要的。I think the most important thing is political advancement. We must have political faith, firm ideals and beliefs. 我们的政治信仰。In the more than nine decades since the founding of the CPC, China has weathered invasion, civil war, upheavals, chaos, and stunning growth. Yet now, in the 21st century, the CPC faces new pressures in leading the world's largest population. China's economy and society have become highly complex with many problems, from imbalances to pollution, and through the internet and social media, almost everyone is aware of them. 就是最近这十五年来，世界发生的变化很快。中国的经济总量虽然在这个发生很快的这种增长，但是带来的一些社会问题，以前可能呃更多的就是发展经济，现在发现也有在发展经济的过程中间，也会遇到非常多的一些社会问题，比如说像两极分化，呃贫富不均的这种问题也会在社会上出现。包括像在发达社会中间出现的一些就业的问题，包括教育体系等等这些问题，它都会出现。那么，这都是共产党面对的一些新的问题。What are the main challenges for the CPC in the new age？ 关于这个问题，呃，我想
，呃，在呃迎难而上的中国共产党一书当中，作者已经做了一个很好的回答。Zhang Weiwei is the deputy director of the editorial board of the book series Understanding the CPC. 概括起来，在当今世界，这个中国共产党面临的挑战，既有来自国内的，也有来自国际上的，既有来自理论上的，也有来自现实中的。一是关于国家命运的挑战。走在时代前列的中国共产党，实现民族复兴和中国梦，关键是要把握好两个因素：一个是中国之之道，就是马克思主义；一个是中国之路，就是中国特色社会主义道路。所以，怎样高举旗帜？怎样坚定地走中国特色社会主义的道路？怎样不断地完善中国特色的社会主义制度？怎样不断地进行理论创新，丰富和发展中国特色的社会主义理论体系？这是中国共产党面临的一个挑战。二是执政的挑战。中国共产党是一个执政党。作为执政党，他始终面临着执政的考验、改革开放的考验、市场经济的考验、外部环境的考验。这四个考验，也就是四大考挑战。呃、uh, ，How do you see the evolution of the party going forward? Because the party has had several steps of important modernization, where Uh, whereas in the past, the party was entirely workers and soldiers and uh, uh, peasants and farmers uh, as, as the totality, because the party was the proletariat. But as the world changes, uh, uh, knowledge creators, scientists, managers, entrepreneurs who create new things are, are a, a different uh, class that have, have emerged as society changes. Um, and, and in many respects, those knowledge creators, be they in, in science or in, in enterprises, entrepreneurs, are the, 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 the true leaders of society because they're the ones generating the energy to build society. How does the party articulate with this new way of, 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 uh, of, of, of social development? From the development of the party, 既是中国工人阶级的先锋队，同时，它又是中国人民和中华民族的先锋队。这是随着历史社会的发展，我们党的性质就是这么规定的。于云耀 is the former vice president of the Central Party School of the CPC Central Committee. And current president of National Society for Party Building Studies, having spent most of his life studying the Communist Party, Yu is the authoritative source for party building theory, its organizing principles, disciplines, and regulations. So, in the past, workers, peasants, in the past, have developed more. So, in the modern era, the activist class. 有知识、有文化的人越来越多的加，包括青年学生加入党的队伍，这也是非常正常的。而且改革开放以后，我们党已经把知识分子作为工人阶级的一部分，所以党必须是把社会各方面的优秀人才、成人党的纲领。和章程这种优秀分子吸收到党内来，所以当然我们也不能忘记工人、农民在一线的那些劳动者。现在我们仍然强调，同时我们也要吸收知识分子，包括科技工作者，呃，各方面的优秀人才。
，应当说在新的历史条件下，保持党的先进性是一个非常艰巨的任务。我理解这种先进性，最重要的还是政治上的先进性，就是要相信我们的政治信仰。要有坚定的理想信念，这是这个先进性最重要的是体现在这个方面。So what is the characteristics of philosophical advancement? What do you have to believe or think or your mental processes to determine if you are philosophically advanced?、Uh, what are the char What are the characteristics of philosophical advancement that determines your party eligibility? 它有坚定的理想信念。坚信共产主义的远大理想，坚信中国特色社会主义的共同理想。第二，他必须是全心全意为人民服务的。党员、党的组织，他必须是为老百姓办事的。第三。这个党，它必须是有一个好的作风，它是密切联系群众的，它是能够认真开展批评与自我批评的，它是能够做到理论联系实际的。未来的几十年、二十年也好，三十年也好，我想到那个时候，我们中国共产党。只要坚持这三条，就是一个先进的、充满朝气和活力的、能够带领全中国人民为新的更高的目标奋进的马克思主义执政党。对这一点，我抱有充分的信心。历史已经说明，我们党。尽管在当前的历史条件下，还有很多考验，还面临着很多危险，但是只要坚持我刚才讲的这三条，我们能够依靠我们党自身的力量和人民的监督，做到自我完善、自我革新、自我提高。For the world to understand China. It must understand why the party asserts that its continuing political leadership is optimum for China's development. One key is the party's adaptability, stressing experimentation and testing of new policies. China today, under current conditions, is best served by its system with a single leading party. But for the CPC to retain its ruling status, it has a higher obligation. To enhance standards of living and personal well-being, which includes increasing democracy, transparency in government, public participation in governance, various freedoms, rule of law, and human rights, President Xi states that the CPC should be governed by rules and procedures that are standardized and open to public oversight. The CPC claims a historic mission. In a thousand years, when the long annals of political systems are compiled, China today may well be a case study of what happens when a country that has a system with a single leading party seeks to construct a prosperous democratic society. Understanding the CPC keeps us closer to China.